The feedback I've gotten over the years from attendees is that while the material is powerful and it impacts their businesses, they just don't get enough. So they say to me, if only we could spend more time with you and the other presenters and really pick your brain, absorb the knowledge that you have to share and get hands-on training. So to satisfy this need, I created Success GPS programs. If you're here, it's because you want to succeed. Being the fact that it's a hands-on workshop, we are getting a ton of value in terms of gaining more clarity for our business and approach, uh, approaching ways to wow the clients and customers that we do have. Some of the Success GPS events are short, single-day experiences, a couple of hours, but our premier event is an extended, hands-on, experiential retreat. Business owners can come, spend three full days locked down and learning everything they need to know to be successful in business and in life. Everybody up, I'll come out and get you. You over there too, up, up, up. See, if you already sit down, then you've already flunked, which means you've already given up. Industry leaders that are here today that are so authentic and passionate about being of service to others, uh, it, it sort of opens my heart and my mind to being really possible and staying on the right track. I've spent 25 years listening to thousands of speakers looking for the best of the best. Of all these, I handpicked this lineup of amazing speakers because I knew that they would bring it and that they would put it all on the line with their heart and soul to create an amazing experience for our attendees. In addition, all of the presenters are passionate about helping small businesses and entrepreneurs succeed and take the time on and off the stage for every attendee to get what they need to go to that next level. So, so I say show up, follow up, and lift up. Give back and don't ever, I don't care where you are in life, if you think you haven't arrived somewhere to where you can't give something back, you're wrong. It's the exact opposite. The minute you start stepping, bring someone with you. Don't even hesitate, get here, do it. Be here, be the first one signed up, be, sit in the front row, get all the information and you, it will be mind-blowing. It'll just be, it's a game changer to be here. It's just a game changer. So don't miss the experience live and in person. Go to register at successgpsseminars.com for our upcoming event. And in the meantime, get ready to be inspired. Okay, so philanthropy, purpose, priorities, and profit. Promote your higher purpose, achieve genuine success. Oh. <laughs> um, the one thing I remember, I was trying to think about this talk, and this memory kept coming to me, and it was just before I started junior high. And new school, I probably because my daughter is 11, turning 12 next month, and she's right in that. And so I'm probably feeling those emotions again for her. But I remember the night before junior high, um, I was in bed, my parents noticed that my light was still on and it was way into the night. So they came in and they could tell I was struggling. And they said, are you okay? And I said, what if there's people there that don't like me? And I remember my dad saying, there probably will be. <laughs> and they basically told me that, that no matter, you, I mean, that you might be the most juicy peach that could be picked off the tree, the most delicious, juiciest peach, and somebody still won't like peaches. So it doesn't really matter. You go and be who you are, and the people that will love you will love you. You be kind to everybody, but you don't have to be best friends with everybody. So just in the same way that you don't, you know, everybody in the world is not your favorite person, <laughs> you get to pick and choose, they had that same choice as well, and so not maybe, you know, you might go somewhere and people might not like you. And so that leads to this. It's okay if you don't like me. <laughs> and when I think of that, I think it's hilarious that so many people are so concerned about public speaking that it is actually the number one fear. And I'm talking over death, the number one fear, right? And so I know a lot of you have heard Jerry Seinfeld, how he says, you know, that if it's the number one fear, then that means if you go to a funeral, then more people would rather be in the coffin than given the eulogy, right? <laughs> so it's okay if you don't like me. Not everyone has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Okay, so who am I? My name is Susan Amber Birch. Um, I'm an author, a speaker, and an ambassador. And these, if you look in the corners, and those are some of my very favorite causes, and I'll talk about those later. Um, I'm also a publisher. My company is Hawaii Way Publishing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of Hawaii Way Magazine. So I'm always looking for great content for my magazine, get great contributors as well. Hawaii Way stands for Health and Wealth and Inspired Ideas. So people always think that I live in Hawaii, which I would love to do someday. <laughs> but right now, I'm based in California. We are doing retreats in Hawaii. Where I have someone there right now scouting out the location where we're going to do our next retreat. Um, but health and wealth and inspired ideas, because we need both in our life to balance it and to make us so that we have genuine success. I am also have been a real estate broker for over 14 years. And if you guys have fallen in love with Lake Tahoe, then our second office is here in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> and my incredible, fabulous broker, who is also my very best friend in the world, and you would be privileged to work with her, is here, and her name is Rainy Calderon. So if you love this area and you want to know more about it, obviously find her. Oh. OK, this is the other thing you need to know about me. Two things. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering what in the world that means. Um, I've told you all these other things about me, but the thing that I haven't told you is something that I'm going to brag about. There's a couple of things I'm going to brag about. From third through sixth grade, I was the arm wrestling champion at my school. <laughs> and when I was um, a senior in high school, I remember the captain of the football team coming up to me and telling me, he needed to arm wrestle me because in sixth grade, I had beat him in front of a lot of people. <laughs> and he was now this huge, muscular guy. And for his own ego, he needed to arm wrestle me to prove to himself that he could beat me now because he was so shocked because I was a scrawny little girl and I could beat anybody. And I said, absolutely not. I am the reigning champion. Why in the world would I give up my belt now, right? So yeah. I also was an ace with a slingshot. Where I grew up, this is where I grew up. At the base of those mountains, we ran all of those mountains that they were, um, I'm going to get emotional now, you'll see why. Um, that was my childhood. This is what's happening right now to those mountains. So, it's, so we lived at the base of a ski resort called Brian Head. And um, right now, that, the Brian Head, it says, it continues to grow. This was from this morning from Facebook. I found this. It said, it continues to grow and has burned over 27,000 acres. So nine communities have been evacuated. And at least 13 homes and eight outbuildings have been destroyed by fire. This is my very best friend that still lives in that area. This is the picture from her backyard. And she, I love her. And I'm going to read what she said because it's really, I asked her if I could quote from this. She said, this is a picture from her backyard this morning. And she's usually able to see the beautiful mountains behind her home. But you see the smoke pouring in. She said that she's so, I'm trying to read here. <laughs> I'm shocked, emotional, and I'm mourning the loss, the change of my mountains, of Perwin's mountains. Um, penguins, and she says, I'm mourning the loss for the farmers, the outdoorsmen, the hunters, and the nature lovers. I want this fire out. I hope that Mother Nature will intervene soon and help the firefighters. So I hope and I pray. But I'm not going to be angry because anger is not going to put this fire out. It will be beautiful again in a different way. So I love that. Because as I'm giving updates to my husband about being very concerned, um, as the fire comes over the hill, and my parents' home is only about maybe eight, nine miles from the fire at this time. But I loved, loved what she said, because what it did, sometimes we feel burdened. I love this picture because it feels burdened. 
But what you do is you need to shift your perspective. Okay, so since I told you I was an ace with a slingshot, I'm gonna give you something that I want you to know. When I was playing with a slingshot as a kid, the thing that I didn't understand about it is it was really teaching me about life. How often in life are we pulled back? How often do we just feel like we're stuck somewhere? We're so, we know we're so close, but we're just stuck or something's you know, keeping us, holding us back. But let me tell you something that I want you to know about slingshots. It says, if you ever feel like you are being stretched to the limit or being held back, it's off, that often just means that you are readying yourselves to launch. And I love that. I think that it is so true. When we feel pulled back, think about the times in your life. Usually just before you launch, there was a huge setback. There was a huge setback and something pulled you back. I, I mean, this is an amazing experience for me to be in this room because people in this room have inspired me in so many ways. And thank you for this morning. You absolutely inspired me. And Alex Stern is another one. Um, you know, beginnings of my business, I'm thinking about it. You know, just starting in my home, solopreneur, you feel like it's all on you. And hearing him, with his level of success, talk about being in an attic, building his business, that empowers me to know that from small things, great things happen. So why are we here? I, this is my room. I love people like this. I love constant learners. I love people. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, you truly are doing something for yourself. You're the type of people who are, are willing to put the effort in that it takes to excel. If you're in this room, you're that type of person. But why are we here? And I'm talking in a global sense too, not just here in this, in this room. But why are we here? We're here to bless ourselves, right? How can we make more money? How can we make our business more successful? How can we bless ourselves? How can we bless, you know, it's a selfish desire, right? How can we bless ourselves? And then after that, how can we bless our families? Oh, I don't want to go, I'm going to stay here. Um, and then after that, we want to bless others. So that's usually the cycle that we go to. First, it starts with ourselves. Once we've, you know, we have acquired what we need to, we can bless our families. Then we can bless others. Then once we've blessed a few people, we want to contribute in a big way. And once we've contributed in a big way, that what does that do? It helps improve our world. And then what does that do? If the world we live in is a better place, who does that bless? It blesses ourselves. It blesses us. OK, so I know that you guys have heard this quote, that we need to be careful about the ladder that we climb. Because once we get to the top, we want to be happy once we get there. And I love what Kevin said, how he was saying that he was more successful than he'd ever been. And he was thinking, there's got to be more to it than this. So if the ladder's not leaning against the right wall, every step we take just gets us to the wrong place faster. Stephen Covey. Um, so how do we find genuine success? We set your priorities, support a great cause, Share your message, and then success will be sincere. It'll be genuine. And we'll feel much better about where we've reached, where the ladder that we've climbed. OK, I'm sure you guys have probably heard this analogy, but I love it. Um, and, and whenever I forget this, I need to remember it. You know, it's one of those that you have to go back to and remember. And I have to do that often. <laughs> um, set your priorities. So remember, we just, my husband is here, and we were just redoing our backyard. And we pulled a ton of rocks and gravel and sand out of that backyard. And what happens when you put, if you look at the bottle on the, you know, the left side, if you start out with the sand and you try to fill that bottle, you know, and then you go with the pebbles and then the rocks, it's not all going to fit. But if you, set, you take those rocks, which are your priorities, and you start with them, you put them in first, then you pour the pebbles in, which are the things that, you know, like, first are priorities. What are the priorities in your life? the things that you would never want to let go of. Make those your priorities. Put those in first, and then you're going to do the pebbles, which is you know, your business, the things you need to get to, the pressing things. And then after that, the sand. So don't fill your life with just busy, busy, busy. So, and that's that sand. And also, I like it when it talks about soda. That you, need, you can also still pull a, pour a whole can of soda in there. 
which is also have fun. Enjoy your life as well. Okay, so discover your purpose. So how do you discover your purpose? I want you to think about this. What is your message? What is your message that needs to be shared? What is your moment of truth? The moment that brought you to your message. I want you guys to think about that. And what is the story that only you can tell? Oftentimes, when people come to me and they want to know, what, what should I share? What should I, what do I need to express to the world? They're trying to narrow down their message. This is the question that I ask them. I say, if you pinpointed your life's greatest lesson or life's greatest setback, what would it be? OK, so I've told you a few of the things about me. This is my greatest accomplishment. <laughs> and this is who I do what I do for, and who I have to re always remember to put as my highest priority. Um, my healthy kids, my awesome family. So when I look back, I realize that I have accomplished a lot of things that I set out to do. And I have to revel in those accomplishments. Like they said, you know, celebrate now what you have already accomplished. Because we always look so far, like we have so far to go. And um, so I look at those successes and I think, you know, people might look at me that I have, you know, accomplished a few, you know, things in life. Um, but it wasn't always this way. Back in 2007, we as parents, we heard the most difficult news that you, a parent could ever hear. When our daughter was diagnosed with a cancerous brain tumor, a very highly aggressive cancerous brain tumor. It was news that shattered our world and it broke our hearts. And it left us picking up the pieces. But during that time, we found beauty amongst the brokenness. And this is my daughter. This is her last birthday before she was diagnosed. So she was 10 years old here. Beautiful, healthy, uh, just incredible little girl. And we had no idea that this healthy little girl had this huge, huge setback and journey ahead of her. And yet, this is where we found ourselves in March of 2007. And what I found during that time was, I love the saying when I saw it, um, it's OK to be a glow stick. Sometimes we have to break before we shine. I also really like this saying as well. I see clearly now that we are stained glass windows, often more beautiful after we have been broken, for that is when we see how vibrant the light is that shines from within. So I want you to really think about, I know that there are times in your life that you felt pulled back, that you've had setbacks, incredible setbacks in our life. But during those times, let your setbacks propel you forward. Most of the people in this room I can tell by who's here that you are givers. And oftentimes, it's something that launched us into this sphere. And we have done this. We've taken a step back, and we have let it propel us forward. This is how we took our step back and propelled ourselves forward. This became our cause. So this is our founder of our nonprofit, which is called Hats and Hair from Kids Who Care. And this is my daughter, Chase Birch. And what happened is that all of her friends back home started saying, we'd love to do a fundraiser. We were clear at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital halfway across the United States. And they said, we want to do a, a fundraiser for her. And when I asked her about it, she said, mom, she looked around the hospital and said, there are so many kids who need it here more than I do. So we determined, OK, then what can we do? If they're doing this fundraiser, what can we do to give to those kids? And when I was at the wig shop, I felt very inspired to pick up something that is attached to the back of her hat. 
and we invented something called the hat and hair. And the hat and hair, we knew we had something that every child wanted because as soon as my daughter lost her hair, she flipped that on, and as you see, she hardly missed a beat. It was devastating for mom, but for her, she put that on, she could just go. And little girls would run up to us constantly at the hospital and say, where did you get that? I've never seen anything like it. I want one of those. So we wrote back home and told people that every little kid in the hospital wants one of these. Please help us. And we created something, a little charitable cause at the time, that took us outside of our situation and helped us so much to get through what we were going through. We would have little girls come knock on our door and say, are you the ones who give out the hats with the hair? And that truly was what saved us. So we created our nonprofit called Hats and Hair from Kids Who Care. And right now we're in the process of taking our, our um, hat and hair and getting it patented because we know that it's a 30, uh, or excuse me, $3 billion industry, the um, hair extension industry. And what we want to do is, like the Tom's model, we want to take these hat and hair and so that when we sell one, we give one. But in the meantime, what happened is after we came home, we saw, we heard this, say, this uh, statistic that struck us so strongly. It said when a child is diagnosed with cancer, their number one fear is not dying. It's losing their hair. It's not losing their life. It's losing their hair. And we, we knew how to alleviate that fear. I love the saying. It's Nancy Freights, and she says she is the, the founder of the Ice Bucket Challenge after her son was diagnosed with ALS. She said, when you find something that is completely unacceptable to you, dig down, find your best self, and then go after it. And so we knew that we had, the, we had something that could alleviate the greatest fear of children with childhood cancer. And so we were going to do as much as we possibly could to help as many children as possible. So we recru recruited other little heroes to help us in our cause. And now every time we go back to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we take bags full of blankets and toys and give out our hats and hair. And we have now given out over 1,000 hats and hair to children with cancer. And this right here is my daughter. She's 20 years old now. She's doing fabulous. She is one semester from graduating from college in three and a half years. And she is 10 years cancer free. Thank you. So not only did we start our charity, the thing that I saw is that we inspired others to do good. And that was the power in this. 30 people were inspired to donate their hair that have told us directly that my daughter's experience made, you know, I, I stopped counting after 30, to be honest. It's probably more like 50. We also became ambassadors for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which we love. We're so incredibly grateful for. Um, and I also, as of mm, a couple of years ago, decided that after eight years of being a national spokesperson for St. Jude and speaking all across the country on the Today Show, incredible, fantastic events, trying to get the word out about this beautiful hospital and saving children, I decided I had a message that I needed to share that was my own. And so I've also decided you know, to go out and speak myself. And I love this. I, I wrote this before I knew Bill was going to be here, and I love that I'm quoting from Bill Walsh. But, and I, did, I went to his Rainmaker, and he, it was a fabulous event. But, and that's where I met so many of the people. That's why I'm here on stage, to be honest. Um, but he said, philanthropy is the currency of the future. So if you support and attach yourself to a charitable cause, your success in life will be greater and more fulfilling. And this isn't just me saying it. This is, these are no, there are numbers that prove this over and over again. It improves your name recognition. It helps recruit and retain talented employees for your company. It boosts your brand reputation. It increases sales and positive consumer sentiment. It improves the quality of life in communities where you do business. So when you do good, your bottom line gets better. And 
this is another quote from the person who runs the St. Jude Dream Home, talking about how if you associate yourself with charities, then your likability rating goes up. And this is a chart explaining that. Socially conscious business is thought of in a much higher light than its competitors. And let me tell you why I know that this is true. Because why else would anybody ever spend $70 to buy this exact shoe? But why did they do that? They did it because if you buy that shoe, then someone who needs one is going to get one. So these are some companies who have done that. Tom's, Newman's Own, was that the very best spaghetti sauce? Did I buy it over and over again? Absolutely I did because I knew that it was going to, that he has, it was always going to go to a great cause. So associate yourself with a great cause. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, top notch, make a wish, incredible organization. Um, Unite for Good. And if you don't know what Unite for Good is, if Bill Walsh is still around, talk to him because Unite for Good is going to be a huge, huge initiative to help get the word out of, about so many charities and unite people to do exactly what we're talking about here. Okay, so, or, of course, you can associate yourself with our charity, Hats and Hair from Kids Who Care, and we would love that if you did. So the Ice Bucket Challenge, so we created, my, my daughter and I sat down and talked about how we could create something that's similar to the Ice Bucket Challenge. And this is what we, we loved about the Ice Bucket Challenge is that they started in their little local community once they knew that their son had been diagnosed with ALS. And they, he decided, I, what I want to do is get Bill Gates to be part of this. In two and a half weeks, the Ice Bucket Challenge spread around the world. And they were able to get... <laughs> tons of celebrities and people in incredible places to do the Ice Bucket Challenge. And look who they got. Within a month, they had Bill Gates participating, dumping water over his head for the Ice Bucket Challenge. But, not, but this is the fun and games of it all, but what did it actually do? It raised, what did it do? Raised money, millions of dollars for ALS. Advanced the research beyond what they thought they could do. They said that they with those funds, they may be able to advance the research faster than they had in the last 10 years. Okay, so this is called Chase the Extraordinary Deeds Challenge. So we're going to tell you how you can be extraordinary. So there'll be a number that I'm going to put on the screen. It is up there, but you might not be able to read it. It's kind of small. But we're going to have you text this number here. And randomly, you will not know <laughs> when we will text you back with the challenge. So how many of you have been dared in your life? I'm actually wondering how many of you have been dared, or do you not want to admit that, <laughs> or what you were dared to do? But anyway, so it's the do good challenge. So basically, we will text you back, and you will need to either compliment someone, give someone a hug, do a good deed, or donate to a charity. And our charity link will be directly on that challenge. <laughs> so within 10 minutes of getting that text, you will have to do, accomplish that and then send it out to three more people. And what does that do? By sending it out to three more people, you can help spread good across the world. And here is my daughter actively giving out to the, our hats and hair to children with cancer, and look at the smile on their face. That's what you get to provide to a child. It truly is priceless. So here is the text your name and challenge. So you, if you pull out your phones, <laughs> then here it is. You can look it up, 559-972-4168. So you can text your name and challenge. I will show it later, too. OK, so create your le legacy. So you aren't remembered as much by what you made, but you will be by what you gave. When you create your own mission statement, I want you to truly think about this. When you go home, this is something you can do like tonight when you go back to your hotel room. It's not that difficult, but it's, it's something to start really thinking through the process. Create your mission statement. Envision the good that you can do. Really envision that good that you would want to bring to this world, and then write it down. Write it down, and then go do it. OK, so how can you spread your, mes your own message? So I've told you what we've done. I've told you how we've done our, you know, have created our message, what our priorities were, 
where we, what we, the direction we went, but you can speak and vlog, you can create your own campaign, you can sponsor and support an event or a charity, and you can become a best-selling author. And I know that they talked about becoming a best-selling author and what that can do for you. Um, the words that you write and the good you do are the only things that will truly live beyond you. So don't die with your life's message inside of you. I want, you to, I want to inspire you, um, and I want you to inspire others by sharing your message. So I want you to publish. And I know that I, heard, I hear it, and I heard it today from the stage, how easy it is to publish now. It truly is compa compared to what it used to be. Um, but what, what do you get? It's also really easy to go to Vistaprint and type in for free a business card, right? That says, by, you know, a free by, business, by Vistaprint or something like that. Is that the type of card you want handing out? Is that what you want to give to people? Is that the image that you want? So you do have to be careful. You can get your message out, but you want to make sure it's at the highest quality you can. OK, so let me talk one more time. So my company is Hawaii Way Publishing. And what, the reason we created my company is for a good while, I was hearing all of these authors that were either they were self-published or they were trying hard to get into the traditional world. And they, there's so many problems with both. Or they were being taken advantage of in big ways. <laughs> and so when they were paying tens of thousands of dollars sometimes and then getting a low quality product out of the deal. And I was tired of that. And I knew I had, had, I had an incredible team that I had put together to publish my books and realized as people came up to me asking me how to publish and if I could help them, that I needed to start this company. So Hawaii Way stands for health and wealth and inspired ideas. So your message might not be born of tragedy um, or an incredibly difficult situation, but you have a knowledge inside of you that you need to share. We all do. And you, I know that you paid a high price for that knowledge, and, I, and it is so deserving to be shared with the world. So I heard this also said today, that authors are now respected more than doctors are. And the, the word author, excuse me, the word authority and author come from the same root cause. And that when you have a book, you're able to be the authority in whatever you have written about. So who is Hawaii Way Publishing? Hawaii Way Publishing, we're a concierge publishing company. And what we do is we take the book that is inside of you from creation to completion. And so sometimes that seems overwhelming to write a, a whole book. There's wonderful ways that we can get a book out very quickly. But we also have an incredible thing that we're doing where we do a collaboration book. And you write your most poignant chapter in your book and you submit that to me and we refine it and we get it exactly how we want. It's highly edited, it's beautifully done. And you get to be, go alongside of incredible contributors to this book. And you will be a published author. And every one of our books that we have put out and put out a, a best-selling campaign have all been bestsellers. So with your help, you could be a best-selling author before your entire book is ever out. And it, we always will publish a book that you will be proud of. Um, I guess I've covered that, covered that. <laughs> um, so this is how you can um, win a chance to become a, a contributor to one of our books. And the way that you can do that is to do something that's dear to my heart, which I've already told you about, which is contribute to our charity. So where you can go is you can go to GoFundMe.com, hats and hair from kids who care. So GoFundMe.com, hats and hair from kids who care. And it's a $1,000 value. And if you, all you need to do is when you go to this link, if you make sure to put book, collaboration, in your link down below, you can, if there's a thing that will thank you, then I'll know and we will make sure that you're a part of one of our next books. Okay, so one more time, here is the link, nine, excuse me, 559-972-4168. So you can either check challenge, if you wanna be part of the challenge. 
If you'd like to be part of the, our, our freebie, which is a half hour consultation with me, I would love to talk to you guys wherever you are at in the process of um, you know, writing, uh, becoming, you know, getting published. I would love to talk you through that process. So that would be the freebie today. And I usually charge $100 to do that with each you know, one of my people. And so, but today I want to give that away to each one of you for free. So I, I love what he does, <laughs> but, and I probably will be changing over so you won't have my number on there. So this is, this is my business you know, number that you can text. So when I was mm, a few years ago, I did not have a publisher in my directory. I didn't have it in my phone, but today, if you text that number, you will. And you can text me at any time, and I would try to get back with you with your answers to the, you know, getting published. And I saw so many hands go up when they said, do you want to be a published author? So this is the last thing that I want to say, is keep calm and fight on, and leave the, the world a better place than when you found it. Thank you so much.